Hi everybody, I've been out shopping around for floating fly lines eight, nine months more. Now I've had a recommend from a Mr. Mark Hammond. On the back of this I've ordered the line. As soon as the line arrives, I'm loading it onto my flywheel. A couple of hours later I'm out on my local water and I'm pulling the line off the reel. And the first thing I realise is that the line sat straight to the floor. No coiling, so it's got very good memory. And then when I'm casting, it's loaded the rod really quickly. The casting of it was very smooth. Um, the presentation was pretty much spot on. So there's a lot of benefits to this line that I believe will suit a lot of you out there who are getting started in fly casting or wanting to improve. Now, I'm not saying it's the best line out there, but it does tick a lot of boxes. Now the line's made up with a short front taper, a short belly and a much longer taper. Now it's set up not like a lot of the lines that are out there which generally have a longer front taper and then a, a straight running line now this back section is a tapered back section and it's very long which means its power delivery is really good so what i've done i put a short video together um, it's not the best of video clips or footage I have. I was hoping to do a lot more than this, but obviously we're in this lockdown, so I'm unable to do so. But with what I've got, hopefully you will get an idea of how good this line could be. Now, we're out at Garnfrood, cracking fishery, and the water is quite flat so you're enabled then to see how well that line sits on the water how good the memory is from how it sits there and then if you watch carefully as to the line on the back of the reel how straight that is so that's the memory but it also casts really well now on this clip i'm using a faster tip action now this is for my own purpose to find out what it will and what it won't do check the parameters of the line but bear in mind that you will be putting that line on a uh, mid tip action rod which is what's recommended and it's a lot slower smoother it really does work well so watch the clip make up your own lines and then when we're done, we'll meet up back here and then I'll tell you what line it is and more importantly, how much it is. Okay, so I've just started, put a bit of line out there. Um, let's see, at that point there, nice slack water, there's a bit of a little kink there, a little bit there, this, in all fairness, is very, very good. What I'll do, for the casting, it's actually, the wind is coming slightly off my left. So, you know, there's a bit of an advantage to me on the casting part, but I tell you what, that, I don't know what sort of length I am there, but, and it really doesn't take any work at all. We'll just potluck one back cast as you can see there that's right out um, just, just pull that a little absolutely brilliant you're not going to get much better than that in all fairness 
the line in the hand actually does feel quite nice. So again, take them off the water there, just pull a bit of line out. Stay steady. Well, I've got to be honest, on this more of a tip action rod, that line really does work well. There we go, let's see what happens if I put the whole line out and what it does. Okay, we're on to the back in there. Let's just see. I'm to get my line set up right. Actually, I'm tangled up here already. Let's see. Now then, I don't know about lifting off at distance. Oh, so easy. Well, a bit splashy at the end, and I got stuck on the end. Well, I can definitely say, move this over here. You know, a decent caster won't have no problem at all in pushing this line out there. Yeah, that's a nice line, really. Sat beautifully out there, and that's virtually the whole line, so. And I ain't really come to punch that too hard. So the buzzer fishing will be coming into its own now within a matter of weeks, I would have said. And we're hoping now, in the, by the end of this month, that you know, be quite well into it. Last year, we were middle of March and the buzzer hatch was quite immense. A, a, a lot of fish were coming out on the buzzer then. And to me, it's the most exciting part of the fishing. For such a small fly that you're presenting, you wouldn't think the fish would hit it so hard. And I think what it is, is that the fish it out there, everything is frantic. They're bombing around, picking off all the buzzers everywhere. And they come across yours and they're just too busy. They're not coming up inspecting, they're just going through, smashing it, next one, next one. And you get this amazing, amazing fishing. So, uh, the whole point of that then is a nice good line means you've got direct contact to that little buzzer and you're going to feel every little thing that's going on at, at the other end. If you're going to fish with too much memory, the fish are going to hit it. By the time the memory's taken up and you respond, you know, the hooking isn't going to be nowhere near as good. Okay, everybody. I hope that was some benefit. Now, before we go too far on any further I've got one little tip that I want to show you and it could be very, very useful so have a look at this okay here we are simple now all I've done there is use the old spools that the line come with and if I haven't got that then I'll use an old piece of carton, cut it up with the scissors or something. Um, as you can see, I've got the two little bits there. I've just cut off the end, bent them up, and that keeps the line on there. So the purpose of this, obviously, uh, if, if you've got your line on your reel for several weeks, uh, and the memory in that line isn't as good as it could be, you're gonna be constantly battling with these coils.
so this actually does help now for myself personally uh even if it's three or four days because i gotta clean the lines anyway if, this is mainly on dry lines floating lines with sinking lines and intermediates and so on you haven't got half the problem because it's surprising how much muck these floating lines will pick up on the surface of the water when you're out and when it's left on there and then you store them for whatever periods of time it'll cake on and that is obviously not going to help when you're out casting and fishing on the next trip so the first thing i do i go in the summer months particularly is i'll strip the line off the reel and give it a good wipe clean it down and as i've done that i'll just loop it up come in here with the reel and hang it on hang it hang it straight onto there and that's it and base you know from that when i'm ready to go fishing i come in i've got my reel ready set up i'll just wind it on and off i go so as i say it's it, it is important keep them clean you know help help with the memory this does and um it will obviously enable you to perform better casts you'll fish better uh so hopefully oh and one point never hang directly on that fix in there you'll end up with a very sharp kink the bigger this loop is here the better the whole thing is so there we are hope hope that is a good or useful tip but look after your fly lines certain of the floating lines you want to really look after these i think these lines are overlooked a lot of people are more concerned with the rods and the reels and so on but it's the fly line in my opinion that is the most important part of your whole setup you can get away with a lot on rods and reels you certainly can but lines critical got to look after them okay for me that works um as i said uh, I, I i do this all the time i'll come home from after a fishing trip uh give them a good clean hang them up put them away uh, as i say it doesn't really take long and it really does help to look after them lines so <clears throat> everything to one side i personally think this line as i say it's not the best line out there in the world but it does tick a lot of the boxes and due to its cost i i think a, a good starting line uh, i'd probably use this line quite a bit anyway not everything is perfect one of the downsides has to be that it does have a little bit of stretch this is no different to a lot of the lines out there. There are one or two lines out there that I know have done a bit more to reduce that stretch, but the only time it makes a big difference is when you've got the whole line out. When you're fishing your close range, mid range, it has no problem. Now, I've hooked plenty of fish on this already. I've had one trip, that was my second trip. I had a previous trip where I was casting the line and putting it into the wind, not a problem. Hooking fish, no problem. But when you are those big distances, is that the hooking of the fish, you just got to be a bit more aggressive. So there we are. Now, what line is this? <clears throat> it's a barrio. Uh, the company is in Scotland, so go online, have a look, check out Barrio Lines. The website is simple. Um, I'm hopeless with computers, but I did find this very easy to navigate. Uh, friendly company and services spot on. And the prices start at £28. So have a look at it for 28 quid. 
I think it's a real bargain. And as I say, if you're out there learning to fly cast, you've got a mid-tip action rod, that loading of the rod so quickly, and that back taper, uh, spot on, you, you're gonna love it. So have a look at it. Uh, oh, before I go, I'm gonna have, or hoping to do, when we come out of this mess is uh, a video on presentation of floating fly line leaders and tippets now for you guys starting out this could be very useful um, to be honest for a lot of you who have been out on the water for a while now I know well why i'm doing a lot of this obviously because i've been requested it a lot and certainly on the leader section but when it comes to the presentation of the floating line i do notice when i'm on the water that i'll just save it for the video so don't miss out subscribe hit the bell and hopefully i'll catch you on that water very soon